I am your brother in Christ. Today's topic, what does the Bible say about transgenderism? First of all, defining what transgenderism is, we are not referring to hermaphrodites, which we have approximately only 450 cases of this birth defect. We are not going to be talking about that. We'll be talking about transgenderism, which is the conversion from one gender to another. We'll also be touching what the Bible says about cross-dressing and what the Bible says about being born in the wrong body, which is the most common statement from transgender people. So does the Bible ever use the word transgenderism? No. Nowhere in the Bible is transgenderism used due to the fact that it was not something they dealt with at the time. The closest thing they would have dealt with is cross-dressing and the question of being born in the wrong body. The first question about cross-dressing is addressed in Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. A woman must not wear man's clothing, nor man wear woman's clothing. For the Lord your God detests anyone who does this. The question is the context that this is in. If we put this into context, we're seeing men that are trying to become women and women that are becoming men by wearing their clothes. And at that time, that's the only thing they could actually do. This is not stating that clothing that is for both genders wrong based on their culture. For example, in Japan, the kimono was worn by both men and women. From a Western standpoint, it does look like a dress. Again, they're not trying to deceive you. They're just wearing what they naturally wear. What about acting? What about plays where men had to portray women because there were no women actresses at that time? Again, this is not referring to this. This is not directly addressing that. So now that that has been addressed, we move on to being born in the wrong body. The statement that most transgender people use is, I am born in the wrong body. I'm a man born in a woman's body or a woman born in a man's body. What does the Bible say about that? Psalms 139 verse 13 through 16 addresses this. For you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days you have ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Looking at this verse, we know that the Lord knows our innermost being, even before we're knit together in our mother's womb. He knows us, and he knows all the days he has ordained for us, he made for us, that we would be living through. He knows our hopes and desires, even before we are born. We continue with Ephesians 2 verse 10. For we are God's masterpiece. He created us anew in Jesus Christ, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. The final verse is found in 2 Samuel 22 verse 31. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all those who take refuge in him. Am I born in the wrong body? According to the Bible, no. You are born exactly as God intended you to be born as. As we read in Psalms and Ephesians, we know that his way is perfect in all things. So what is this really? So what is transgenderism? Is it a sin? That is the question, after all. What is the Lord's plan? The Lord's intention for every man is to grow to become masculine, and for every woman to grow to become feminine. When this doesn't happen, and there's a lack of teaching in childhood, or a lack of development, or a good role model for the child to see masculinity or femininity in what they should be, our culture decides to put a label on it instead of addressing the deeper problem. These new labels that our culture puts on children who are confused on what femininity and masculinity should actually be is transgendered and transsexual. But when it comes down to it, God is not affected by these new labels, nor does he have to honor them. He sees the root problem. He sees past the disguise of the label that 
our culture has now put on these people. He sees that they are broken and he sees this as what it is, a disorderly desire. Is transgenderism a sin? Yes and should be treated as all other sins. We all develop our own disorderly desires, and we all have to struggle with them. They're called sins, and we all have to work through them. And someone who is going through the sin of transgenderism has no less value. So as always, let's end in a prayer. Lord of creation, redeemer of all, we come before you and we ask for your guidance. Please give us wisdom in order to discern between truth and falsehood. For those of us who are lost and struggling with sin, please show us those who will walk beside us and help us get through our rough times in life. In the name above all names, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.